YouTube and see how well this works. Somehow I do not have high hopes. All right, so the first thing I want us to look at is me looking at, or talking about heart failure. So I drew my beautiful heart, and just to follow everything through, and maybe my little pointer will help here, um, we have our heart, we have our, our right side, our left side, our atria, and our ventricles. And what we get from the body is deoxygenated blood flowing into the right atria, and that goes in the right ventricle, it flows over to the lungs, picks up oxygen, that blood flows back into the right, uh, sorry, the left atria, into the ventricles, and back out to the body. And in heart failure, heart failure is an inability of our heart to deliver or supply enough oxygen to the body. I usually contrast this with angina, because angina is the heart not having enough oxygen, so it can't do its job. It starts to build up lack of oxygen and it hurts. Now we're looking at the body not having enough oxygen. And really, when the body doesn't have enough oxygen, it sends a signal back to the heart to work harder. And when the heart works harder, the muscles build up. And so what you see on the bottom here is you see the, the wall stress. You see the walls building up because the muscles have to work harder. And just like a bodybuilder, if somebody works out their muscles, their muscles get thicker and, and, and they get larger. And so that's what we're seeing down on the bottom. But when they do so, they again can't work quite as hard. And so what you get is this feedback in heart failure. You get a buildup of a, a little bit of heart failure causes muscle buildup, which causes more muscle buildup, more muscle buildup, uh, uh, etc. And, and so it's a problem that just keeps getting worse over time. Um, if we have right side heart failure, you would think right side, it's feeding the lungs, you should have a problem in the lungs. And you do, your lungs won't have enough oxygen. But what happens is that you get a buildup behind the right side, so what you get is peripheral edema because you get a buildup in the body. Same thing on the left, the left feeds the body, but the buildup happens pre-body, uh, back in the lungs, and you get pulmonary edema, okay? So when we're trying to help with heart failure, really what we're trying to do is twofold. Number one, when the heart isn't working hard enough, we really need to make the heart work harder. Right, so we're going to have to increase the heart workload or, or workability, really. But over time, if we want to uh, decrease the disability of the heart, we need to make the heart workload less, and that really is going to have an impact on decreasing the progression of heart failure. To make our heart work more, that's going to be uh, in an acute setting. Oh, sorry, this is me drawing the arrow. Our heart workload uh, decreasing, we can do by uh, beta blockers, which I'll draw here in a second, I'm sure. We could do by vasodilators, we can do by um, you know, decreasing volume, ACE inhibitors, all sorts of ways. And in the acute setting, we're going to use beta agonists because in short term, when the heart really isn't working at all, we have to suddenly make it start working. So we use something like epinephrine or dributamine. And so it's, it's it's not really a dichotomy, but it is a little strange that in some settings in heart failure, you use an agonist, but in long-term chronic heart failure, you're going to be using a blocker. Okay, so that is the heart failure. 